Hello, my name is Isabella Jadel, and today I'm going to present a short paper called Don't Be Boring, the Case of a Gamified Google Classroom, which I wrote together with my two co-authors, David Hilberg from the Gamification Studio Insert Coin and Adam Palmqvist from the University of Skövde. The case is about a gamification implementation in an upper secondary school in Sweden. The aim of the implementation was to increase the number of passing students in a mathematics course because the school had a previous problem of not enough students passing the course, which is both costly for society and also demotivating for the students. So to solve this problem, gamification was to be implemented into a Google Classroom. This was done with the help of the gamification studio Insert Coin and their product Gwen. Gwen stands for Gamified World Engine and is an API solution that can be implemented into any digital platform, in this case, Google Classroom. To determine what game elements were to be included, a design workshop was conducted with teachers as well as gamification designers. In the workshop, different target groups of students were discussed to identify different obstacles and motivational challenges. This later became the base for the game elements and that were chosen for the final design. The result was that three main elements were chosen, level, achievement, and shop. To give you a short overview of how this implementation looked, this is the interface that the students saw when first logging into Google Classroom. As you can see in the bottom left corner, there is a widget that the students could press to be able to access the different game elements. So the first thing the students saw when they pressed this widget was the level module in which the students could see what their current level was, how many experience points they needed to progress to the next level, as well as what activities had led to the experience points and what their reward was for achieving a new level. In this case, once the students achieved a new level, they got coins that could be used in the shop module. Here you can see how the shop module looked. Uh, you had your math coins that you could use to buy exam boosters and exam boosters indicated that you got half a point for the upcoming exam. And finally, in the achievement module, the students could see what activities they had to complete to achieve experience points. And this included aspects such as visiting the site several times a week, asking a good question during class or completing different quizzes. To test the implementation, a qualitative approach was taken with interviews for both the students and the teachers side. Semi-structured interviews were conducted with 12 students during three times over the implementation and with all of the three teachers during one time over the implementation. The implementation lasted for seven weeks and the student interviews were done in the beginning, the middle and the end, and the teacher interviews were conducted in the beginning of the implementation. So the results showed that the students were positive towards gamification in general, but also that they were more motivated by the extrinsic parts compared to intrinsic motivation. Meaning that the students liked the aspect of gaining points for the exam most, and that they didn't feel like math had become more motivating in itself. The positive aspects that the students mentioned with gamification was that they felt like competition and cooperation had increased, that they were provided with a context in which they had higher repetition and easier feedback, that they could visualize progression in a clear way, and also that they felt like the focus, learning, and confidence 
had increased, as well as expecting the results at the exam to be better. The negative aspects that the students mentioned were technological exploits, such as getting points for just updating the page. They also mentioned the need for more information about how gamification worked and a higher challenge level uh, with the exercises provided. Furthermore, they mentioned specific things they were missing in gamification, such as having more options in the store. Right now, they could just buy uh, exam points for the upcoming exam, but they wanted more virtual rewards included as well. They were also missing a leaderboard or a way to compare their progress with other students and clarity in reaching a new level. From the teacher's perspective, they were also positive towards gamification, but they mentioned that it had implied a higher workload in the beginning. This was because the approach at the school had been very analog previously, and to implement gamification, the students had to build a Google Classroom with exercises that had taken time. The implica implications that can be drawn from this is that gamification in upper secondary education could enable students to be more active in their learning process. However, for this to happen, there is a need for clear information and guidelines in how gamification works for both the students and for the teachers. It is also important to provide sufficient time in implementing gamification for the students to be able to understand it and for the teachers to be able to do the necessary preparation. In the long run, gamification could also be used to enable higher adaptation and individual and successive progress that would not only lead to extrinsic motivation, but also to more intrinsic motivation for the students. Thank you for listening. If you have any questions or anything you want to comment on, feel free to contact me on isabellagedell at hotmail.com. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.